Hey guys, Paulie Howard. I'm with Fox Sports Radio for the card Friday, March 24th. Before I tell you what I'm betting, time to rant and run. Arizona and Sean Miller choke again playing in San Jose with the final four in Glendale. They can't get it done up eight with 3.30 left. They go to bed. Xavier knocking down threes. Arizona couldn't guard Blewett or anybody all night. The seven-foot stiffs down low couldn't grab any rebounds. The big basket to lay it in, give them the lead. Markinen had the stupid foul over the back. Out of a timeout, they dropped the hook shot for Dusan. Horrible. And Arizona gets beat. A Pac-12 team that underachieved in the tournament finally. And Xavier, they were 500-1 to on March 9th. They're now in the Elite Eight. Saturday afternoon, they play Gonzaga. The winners in the Final Four for the first time in their program history. And how about this tweet? Markkinen did not take a shot in the final 11 minutes. Nice job, Sean Miller. He's off to the lottery now, and they collect the jerseys for Arizona. Horror show. Chris Mack gets it done again. He outcoached Sean Miller big time, and an 11 seed is 40 minutes away from going to the Final Four. I can't believe the sendout. Here in Las Vegas, it was 10. Gonzaga was 10. Early money on Xavier, down to 8. All the pressure's on the Zags. They haven't played a good game yet. They failed to cover so far. Williams, Goss, 10 points, 2 of 10 shooting. What does he have? He's got 10 assists and 9 turnovers in the tournament. But Gonzaga found a way to win with that suffocating defense. Game was unwatchable. The refs ruined that game. Oregon was a pleasure to watch. So was the Arizona game because there's a flow and they weren't calling a foul every time down. Gonzaga was unwatchable. But Matthews buries the big three. 37 seconds left. You should have won no matter what you did because two and a half was available on Gonzaga and three and a half was available on West Virginia. They steamed the total up four points, didn't have a shot. Could have went to double overtime. You still would have cashed that ticket. But Matthews bails them out with the hero three. And few back in the Elite Eight. But all the pressure on Gonzaga. Can they get to the Final Four? Xavier on a free roll. 500 to one. Take that ticket to prop swap if you had Xavier in that one. Tough beat if you had Michigan, who's up three with a minute 40 left. Oregon misses a free throw. They get the rebound, lay it in. They get a stop. They score again. And Michigan doesn't score the rest of the game. And Dana Altman wanted Innes to foul. They had two fouls to give. There's nine seconds left. Michigan's at half court. They're not supposed to get a shot off there. Or it's supposed to be half court heave. Dribble. Walton came in with the ball. Eight, seven, six. No foul. Altman's like, what are you doing? And then he gets off a good look but just misses. That would have been horrible if they lost on a last second shot. It was raining threes for a while there for Michigan. But that Cinderella story goes out. Oregon moves on to the Elite Eight while they'll face the juggernaut. Oh, man, Kansas, 190 and 98 points in the three games so far. They crush Purdue. I agree with the broadcasters when Mason and Graham are on. You can't stop Kansas. Oh, by the way, how about Dorsey? 71 points in three games and 11 to 16 from three in that one. But uh, Kansas, just a freight train right now. Some ugly numbers going back to that West Virginia-Gonzaga game. West Virginia had 21 points off turnovers, 21 points from the free throw line, 10 points in the half-court offense. Then they hit the two threes with Miles and Carter. Lucky push if you had the three. West Virginia shot 26%, and they still had the lead with a minute left. 16 more field goal attempts, three fewer free throw attempts. And Gonzaga with that awesome defense, though, and they're tough as they move on. You know, what am I going to get out of Gonzaga Saturday? They've stunk the whole tournament, but they're in the Elite Eight. All right, time to tell you what I'm betting. Some big feature pro picks over my shoulder and up at pregame. Locked and loaded. Carolina Butler to start the day. South Carolina Baylor. Then the epic, what could be epic, Kentucky and UCLA. It was 97-92 to 92 in December. And then you get Florida and Wisconsin to finish it out. Fezzik with the big three-star game of the year total. Locked and loaded Friday, ready to go. And you got big plays out of Ben Burns and Spartan as well. All three picks over my shoulder. And up at pregame, click on buy picks. I'll go over my shoulder. Not one, but two pros on this game. Taking a dog on uh, in the Friday game, Sweet 16. Handicapping the Cappers, Paulie's pick from the pro. Not my pick, but two pros like the dog. And this one is always betting half a unit on the free play. Koken likes Baylor. Lay it against South Carolina. What concerns me is South Carolina beats Duke. They go back to campus. Everyone tells them how great they are, and they're pumping their tires. Now how they, do they respond? Koken says lay it. I've ranted, now I'm going to run. Good luck out there. We'll talk to you Saturday on pregame.com.